Playing outdoor ice hockey is a time-honored tradition in Canada, but an even older time-honored tradition is the right to be free from excessive use of force and the right to life, liberty, and security of the person. Today I'm going to do a breakdown from a criminal defense lawyer's perspective of the arrest of Ocean Weisblatt in Calgary, Alberta. Hello, my name is Nicholas Wandsbutter. I'm a criminal defense lawyer in Stratford, Ontario, and this is Don't Talk TV. On Thursday, the 17th of December, 2020, a young man named Ocean Weisblatt and his friends were apparently playing hockey at an outdoor rink in Calgary. As I understand it from the news reports I've read, the Calgary police arrived on the scene, and at that point, there were uh, something in the range of 10 to 15 people on the ice and Calgary police allegedly ordered them to leave. What happened after that, or at least portions of it, have been captured on video and shared in social media. Uh, I found one clip that was a little over four minutes broadcast by a YouTuber with um, the lovely name Your Wife's Boyfriend. So I hope that individual doesn't mind that I'm using their video because it's the most complete uh, record of this interaction that I could find. Now the video starts part way through the action, so I don't know exactly what happened before that. Did police tell Mr. Weisblatt that he was under arrest, and did they advise him for the reason of his arrest? You're going against the health regulations in Alberta. What is it? What's the health regulation? Get off the ice. So here we see we see the officers saying, uh, "You're in violation of uh, health laws." Mr. Weisblatt asks what health regulation he's in violation of, and the officer simply says, get off the ice. So it appears to me that he wasn't yet being arrested at this point. This is the thing. We told you that you're going against the health regulation. Oh, shit. Okay, what is the health regulation? Oh, shit. Just shut up. Let's go. Okay, let's hey, let's just go. Name? Hey, let's go. What's let's his go. name? We're just going to go. You're welcome to go, but you might want to help your friend. Yeah, What's his name? It's not a gun. It's a taser, and he's under arrest. So this is the first time we hear that he's under arrest. The officer isn't telling Mr. Weisblatt he's under arrest. She's telling his friends that he's under arrest. Now, she is correct that police are justified in using reasonable force in order to effect an arrest, but what the officer is missing out on is that... Section 10A of the Charter says that every person has the right, upon arrest or detention, to be advised promptly of the reasons therefore. So at this point, I haven't seen that. Mr. Weisblatt has asked several reasons why police are telling him to get off the ice. I think the inference is he's asking him why is he being detained. They have a duty to advise him, and so far I haven't seen anything that could be described as an exigent or dynamic situation that would prevent the police from advising him of that right. So now here we see for the first time the police advising Mr. Weisblatt directly that he's under arrest and they immediately lay hands on him. Now they are allowed to do that to an effect an arrest. You have to take control of an individual and it's potentially a legitimate reason to arrest him if he's fit, if they're intending to issue him a citation or a ticket under the public health regulations and he's refusing to identify himself. Generally, there's no duty or obligation to identify yourself to police unless you're engaged in a licensed activity. But if you're being issued a ticket under a bylaws or public health act, you do have to identify yourself so that the police know who to issue the ticket from. What are you doing? Yeah, like videotape this. Hey, video what are you doing? What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? You are under why are you, why are you what are you doing? Me? Why are you guys grabbing me? He asks why you're grabbing me. I think it's pretty clear he's under arrest. Now here the officer immediately starts delivering a knee strike. Uh, I would certainly be considering a an argument of excessive use of force, um, especially when combined with that section 10A that Mr. Weisblatt seems to be confused and questioning why he's being arrested. He's not actively resisting at this point. So why is there a need to start using violence on him? And make no mistake, this is violence. If anyone else went up to someone and need them like that, that would be a clear assault. Now, at this point, Mr. Weisblatt may be in trouble for a resist arrest. Uh, he... 
up till now he was essentially doing nothing, which as I've described in a previous video, doing nothing doesn't constitute resisting arrest or uh, obstructing justice, but now he's actually skated away from the officers, he's kind of struggled free from them trying to grab him. So that may be a resist arrest, but the police are also taking things to the next level. You hear one officer screaming at him, get on the f ground. Uh, it, it seems to me like this officer is losing control of her emotions. This isn't uh, just calmly and professionally telling someone to comply. She's angry that he's not complying, and she's letting her emotions get the better of her. And she's also deployed a taser. Now, this is significant because I think it needs to be understood what a taser is for. A taser is meant to be a use of force that's an alternative to a firearm. So it's to be used in a scenario where otherwise, or before the invention of tasers, officers would have drawn their sidearm. I don't think anyone would agree that it's appropriate to draw your sidearm on an unarmed young man in, these, in this situation. Now, I don't know what Calgary Police's use of force policy is. I have, I have some familiarity with Toronto Police Service's use of force policy in cases of my own where I've been alleging that the use of a taser was excessive in the circumstances is Her Majesty the Queen in Walcott, which is an Ontario Superior Court of Justice decision. And, and I'll just read from that case what Toronto Police Service uh, says is the appropriate use of a taser. So under the Toronto Police Service taser policy, the devices are considered an appropriate force to employ when a subject's behavior is considered to be at the assaultive level or above. The TPS taser policy provides that police officers may use a taser as a force option to prevent themselves from being overpowered when violently, violently attacked, to prevent a prisoner from being taken from police custody, to disarm an apparently dangerous person armed with an offensive weapon, to control a potentially violent situation when other use of force alternatives are not available, or for any other lawful and justifiable purpose. I would certainly argue in court on this case that none of those apply. A taser is a weapon. It's extremely painful. It's meant for self-defense. And to use a weapon that inflicts pain like that to get someone to do what you want them to do is the dic dictionary definition of torture. Inflicting pain to make someone do what you want them to do. And that's clearly what Section 7 of the Charter guards against and what Section 12 the right to be free from cruel and unusual punishment protects against as well. Oh shit! You are not. Ocean, just get off the ice. Ocean, just get off the ice. So the officer continues to threaten him. He asks again, "Why?" Now he's asking, "Why are you going to taser me?" And she doesn't give him any answer. Then things start getting rough. What are you guys doing? Dude, like, oh now, at this point, Mr. Weisblatt's continuing to not get on the ground. He really should have gotten on the ground at this point. My advice to clients is always be polite, be respectful, and be compliant with police, and let me argue over whether your arrest was lawful when it gets to court. I'm just going to speed us up a little bit here to get us to the good stuff. Now I pause here again because here the officer is, in my view, almost unhinged. Uh, you, hear, you hear her again screaming, get on the f***ing ground. This seems to me to add to the argument that this isn't about compliance, this is about punishment and the officer just having her emotions take control of her, not being professional and dispassionate about the situation. We don't have corporal punishment as a viable sentence under the criminal code anymore, therefore it's not an appropriate punishment for police to be administering as if they're Judge Dredd. What are you doing? Now I'm just going to speed this up again here because really for the rest of the video it's just the continuation of the arrest. Uh, they're pinning him to the ground. They're, they're trying, I, it's not clear what they're trying to do. If police in Canada didn't refuse to wear body cameras, maybe it would be clear that he's refusing to put his hands behind his back or something like that. By the end of the video, it seems that Mr. Weisblatt has been arrested for obstruction of justice and resisting arrest. 
But again, if I were counsel for Mr. Weisblatt, there's several, just to summarize, there's several charter arguments I'd make. I'd argue Section 9 I, over whether his arrest was lawful in the first place, whether the law meets charter scrutiny under which he is being arrested. I'd argue Section 7 and Section 12 in terms of the manner in which the arrest was conducted. I, I believe it was excessive. So there's certainly uh, several interesting things to consider here. Uh, of course, every case is going to be different and decided on its own specific facts. So that's why you need to call a lawyer for advice on your specific case. You're always welcome to call me. My 1855 number is below. And this has been Don't Talk TV. If you found this video interesting or informative, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing.